Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today is episode 4 of TKL Fridays, our series where we review a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard every Friday and check in to see how you guys are doing this week. This week we have something that we've looked at very briefly before in our top 10 keyboards under $100 series and this is the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition super lightweight super cool looking and it's got a really cool set of features that we're gonna dive deep into with our straightforward and honest mechanical keyboard review so let's just jump into it all right so today we are talking about the razor huntsman tournament edition and tournament edition to razor means 10 keyless. I don't know why they decide to call it tournament edition other than the fact that it's really compact and lightweight and slim and usually you can carry it along to tournaments if you need to because it can fit right in your backpack so that probably makes sense as to why it's called tournament edition. So this keyboard we got it for under $100. I know right now it's probably a little bit over that at around $130. We'll link the products down below if you're interested in checking it out. But some of the special things that makes this keyboard unique are its switches and its switches are the Razer Reds. However, they're not like Cherry MX Reds and they're not like Hyper X Reds. They are their optical switches which is Razer's proprietary switches designed for gaming performance. Now what makes them gaming performance, you ask? Let me tell you. And these can be upsides and it can be downsides. I'm going to tell you about my personal preferences and their, my thoughts on them. So they have 40 grams of actuation, which is very light for any switch. Very light on the lowest Probably the lightest switches that I've used ranging from like Cherry, Gateron, Kale, uh, Halos, like all of those. These are probably the lightest actuation force I've ever used. And that can be good because if you are wanting really responsive gameplay, responsive touches, key presses, this is great. You can WASD all you want over and over and over again without really fatiguing your fingers. However, this may, does make it really easy to accidentally press on buttons that you don't mean to press. For example, when I was playing uh, the MOBA that we usually play Heroes of the Storm, I just have my ring finger hovering on the tab key, you know, when you want to look at stats real quick, but I found that even just like the slightest pressure would open up that menu even though I don't mean to and it would happen pretty regularly during the game. It got pretty annoying after a while, so I tried to remove my ring finger from the tab button, but you know, habits die hard. And then another thing that makes it really nice is the actuation distance. So the actuation distance for these optical switches is only one millimeter. Now that is just absolutely insane. <laughs> That's super fast compared to, so Cherry MX actuation distance is two millimeters. These are half of that. That is just crazy. Okay, so if you look at Razer's website where they talk about these optical switches, these are rated up to 100 million key presses. And Cherry MX recently said that their key presses are rated up to 80 million, just like HyperX is rated up to 80 million keystrokes, that's a ton. You're probably never ever going to ruin your switches by pressing on them too many times. Chances are you're going to be bored with your keyboard or want something else before you even get to the point where your switches die out on you. Okay, so we're going to do a full sound test at the end that's about one minute long and we'll compare those to other linear switches that we've used in the past. But just a quick preview of some of the sounds that this keyboard makes. And the stabilizers, spacebar, shift, 
enter, backspace, left shift. So as you can hear, the stabilizers are pretty loud. They use Razer's optical stabilizers, which are pretty much different from everything that I've seen so far. If you look here, you can see that they clip in to the plate and into their housing and you can get them stuck if they don't click in properly which i've done before and they're really loud they're not they're just different they're very different let's look at the back of the keyboard if we look at the back we can see that it has four rubber feet we also see that it has two dual angle adjustable kickstands one is for six degrees one is for nine degrees and at its base it already has some incline and we can compare each degree to the next if you want to customize your angles and inclines these are good adjustments and you also see that Razer put in something that they haven't put on any of their keyboards before and that is a detachable USB-C port it also comes with a USB-C detachable um, braided cable which is quite nice uh, you can get the kinks out of it pretty easily just by straightening it out with your hands it has rubber caps at each end and the razor branding on them too if we look at the case itself it's very sturdy has little to no flex however we can see that the aluminum part of the case is very thin it's only that sliver of top plate that's aluminum and the rest of the case is plastic. This does affect the way that the switches sound and feel. They are very echoey within the case. However, the benefits of this is that it's super lightweight and you can take it anywhere if you're into that. If you're just sitting it on your table and you're not going to move it anywhere, then the lightweightness of it doesn't really matter to you. Another feature that Razer hasn't put on other keyboards that they put on this one is having PBT keycaps. And this has the exact same set as the keycaps that we looked at the, before, the Razer Quartz Pink keycaps, except these are black. Razer also has them in white and green as well as black and pink and I believe they're about $30 for a whole set. So very nice keycaps, very smooth. I would say the black ones feel more smooth than the pink ones. They have the exact same legends, very clean, has the razor secondary functions at the top in the function row. We can see that there is mute, volume down, volume up. We have previous track, play pause, next track. We have a macro mode and gaming mode. And then we have a decreasing the brightness of the RGB lights and increasing the brightness of the RGB lights. So some downsides with the RGB lights is that there's really no way to edit the lights using the board itself. You have to download the Razer Synapse software and then edit them like that or else the only lighting mode you get is the color shift which is where it starts at one color and move rotates through the cycle of colors so like blue cyan green yellow orange and it goes like that over and over and over again but if you download razor synapse you get a lot more options when you first plug in the keyboard if you don't have razor software it will prompt you to install it right away and that's super convenient however if you miss that step then you can always go to Razer's website to download that software if we look at the legends again another feature is that it has a standard bottom row which is something that Razer's never done with their Black Widow lineup with this standard bottom row that means that you can use any other standard ANSI standard keycap set that you find on the internet such as some of the ones that we've been using that we talked about in our keycaps video like the HyperX put-in keycaps you can put on these and all the keys are gonna fit no problem but you just gotta watch out for sizing uh, don't make the same mistakes that we did get the right 
layout and the right size and the right number of keycaps for your keyboard if you want to change it up. If we look at the RGB lighting, it shines through pretty nicely. It's not as bright as other keyboards that I've used before. And we also see that it only shines through the top of each key rather than all of it. So it'll shine through the keycap because they're double shot PBT, but then it'll also shine through the top because there's a dome at the top of each switch where light is emitting through. Okay, so let's talk about gaming versus typing. This Razer definitely advertises themselves as a gaming keyboard, as a company that's meant to serve gamers. Even on the back, you can see that it says, by gamers, for gamers, over and over again with that glossy design that you see right there. So it's for gaming and gaming on this is not bad at all it's actually pretty fun if you're listening to your games through your headsets you're not going to be bothered by the sounds uh, if you play mobas or mmorpgs you're not going to be mashing too many buttons um, to even have that sound disturb you now if you're pressing the space bar really often in your game to jump or stuff like that then maybe it could get a little bit annoying. However, the games that I play, I only press WASD and QWER, so that's really not bad at all. And tab, and of course, talking to people and stuff. Talking trash online, just kidding. I don't do that. I don't do that at all. I defend myself, um, and that's okay. But yeah, gaming, it's perfect. It's fine. The, the noise doesn't bother me at all. However, typing is where this keyboard just falls down through the drain. It is terrible for typing. Even doing just a one minute typing test on this, I feel like my fingers are fatiguing and my joints are just feeling too much pressure. And the reason for that is pretty much because of the really light actuation force and the really short distance and actuation distance, you're gonna be bottoming out every key press whether you want to or not. And if you don't and you actively try not to bottom out, you're gonna be typing really slow. So bottoming out just means that when you press a key, it touches the bottom of the switch and bounces off either the back plate or the PCB depending on how your switches are mounted. So it'll just bottom out and that's what bottoming out means and this repetitive motion and force in your joints can cause a repetitive stress injury so watch out for that and don't get this keyboard if you're going to be doing a lot of typing because that's not good however one thing you can do is add o-rings and install o-rings on all of the alphanumeric keys that you're pressing often that will reduce the noise by quite a decent amount. If you use one O-ring, it's still pretty noisy, but if you use two O-rings for each switch, that helps it a whole lot. And it also decreases the impact because now you have this rubber O-ring that you're bouncing off of rather than a metal or plastic backplate, depending on what it is. So those are some of the things that you can do to really quiet this keyboard up. Another thing you can do is use a desk mat instead of just putting it straight on your uh, wooden or metal desk, whatever you have. If you use a desk mat, that can dampen some of the sounds that the keyboard's making too. It can be a little bit ringy. I think that's just how the switches work and the bottoming out process. We look at each switch, they have their own stabilizer bar, like how Cherry style stabilizers have their stabilizer metal bar that goes through each one. Each one of these optical switches has their own stabilizer. It rattles a little bit without any keycaps on it. And you can also see the dome through the top. And they do have the normal cross stem shaped stems so that you can place any keycap set on them as long as they have that stem shape to them. So these PBT keycaps are pretty thick. They're pretty nice to use. They have no flex in them if you give them pressure and force. So overall, very nice. And on the keyboard, there's really not much 
to complain about visually. It's very aesthetically appealing. Even the razor brand is so lightly etched into the top plate that you can barely see it. And it's got really clean lines. Not like the razor logo before where it was more curvy and more like octopus-like, I suppose. But this is much cleaner, more straight lines, more simple. Just very clean in general. Very nice look. All right, let's jump into the typing test. And afterwards, we'll recap and then tell me what you guys think. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Betty. This is Switch and Click. And here we, we review primarily mechanical keyboards such as this one. However, we also dive into other tech reviews as well. So if you're interested in all of those things, press that like button and subscribe if you want to. We'll jump back into the review right now. Okay, that was the one minute typing test of the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition. We also included a short preview of the typing test of the HyperX Alloy Origins Core, which also has linear switches that we're comparing these switch sounds to. As you can see, one is much more quiet than the other or has a less rattly sound, but more of just a thonk kind of sound. So that's a big difference. So TKL Fridays, we always do this. We ask you, what is one thing that you were super proud of and happy with this past week? For me, it was, for me, it was being really good with working out. We've been very consistent with working out recently. We switched from a push-pull leg split to full body three days a week, which has been super intense and we're training really hard. In fact, the next day we usually sleep like the, like the walking dead and yeah it's just been really fun being on this 
calorie deficit, although that sounds really weird, but fitness has been really fun for us. Working from home has been great. Everything's been going really awesome, and the weather is super nice. See, I'm wearing a tank top because the weather has been really nice. We've been going out on walks every single day. What's something you're super proud of? And tell me what you guys think about the sounds on the Razor Huntsman Tournament Edition. Is it worth buying? I'm gonna say if you're doing any kind of uh, extended periods of typing on this keyboard, I would say no, do not get it. Get something else. Get the Durgod Torres K320 T TKL or get the HyperX Origin Alloy Origins Core with Aqua Switches. Those are much better options for typing. However, you're, if you're just gaming and doing a lot of gaming things, playing all that Fortnite, playing all that League of Legends, whatever you guys are playing, go ahead and get this. It's great for gaming. Feels really nice. And the sounds don't bother you when you're gaming, but if you're typing, that's a whole nother story. Because it's so loud, it's so loud for a linear switch. It did rank last on our top 10 mechanical keyboards under $100. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll link it down below and on the card here. And if you're interested in seeing more episodes of TKL Fridays, We'll include that here and subscribe here if you want to and remember to press that bell button, like the video, do all the things, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.